Kristen. Allie, um, request to join if you can. Maybe I can invite you. Oh, I can. Let's see. Allie, see if you can re request to join. Also, I just wanted to say my eight year old is just meant to sleep. So, let's see. I'm not getting the code to join. Allie says, let's see here if we can add. Here we go. Let's see. Ellie, I invited you, so let's see if that works. Oh. There we go. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. Oh, you have the wild girl hair like I do tonight. You got to. <laughs> you got to. I, I love, was, yeah. my hair was up all day. I took it down to get ready, and Weston looks at me, and he goes, it's a style. I said, thanks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, you, you just got dragged by your kid. Amazing. Burn. They have kids, they said. Um, I'm so happy to see your face, first oh, of all. Yay, I'm so happy to be here. Well, we have a lot of, uh, yes, this is like the famous sweatshirt. Kristen says, I told, this sweatshirt, so story about the sweatshirt, is, was designed by my childhood best friend, who, Emily May, mm -hmm. who she left my school after she, in third grade. So I had, did not see her for years and years. And now she's like this amazing artist. And so she it. made a sweatshirt. So, uh, I love it, right? And then um, I told other people to buy it. Now like a bunch of women I know have the sweatshirt. Um, I think it's, it's amazing. <laughs> wow, we have a lot of people here. Hello, everybody. I get, you know what? Eight o'clock is a good time for this. People like to come on at night, I think. So I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for having me, uh, Olivia. <laughs> you're welcome. So I would love for you to like introduce yourself. Uh, I will give a little preface, um, but basically we keep this at about 20, 25 minutes. If it goes beyond cool. a half an hour, I get yelled at by Jenny because she's the one that formats all of this stuff. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but as somebody that went through a lot of healing over the last couple of years, I think that there's a lot of stuff we don't talk about with healing. Mm -hmm. And I would love to kind of talk about, first of all, like how, you know, how you work with people, um, what you can do. You, you yep. are, you have a lot of things you do in your life. So, um, I, I do. You do. You're like a very multifaceted. I feel like I text you about a lot of different things and you know the answer to everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I remember texting you, and I was like, "I'm gonna need to sage my house." And you're like, "I got you. We're gonna figure this I out." I got you. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I I know Allie from college, and we had many interesting courses together, um, and a lot of lot of anthropology and sociology and all that fun stuff. So Allie, you take over. Tell us who you sure. are, what you do, how you work with people, and then we'll we'll kind of jump into the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much. So my name is Allie Plant. I am located in scenic Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey born and bred. I always have to slip that in somehow. Um, and I and I have to bring it back really quickly to how we know each other. Um, you know, from Drew University. Uh, from attending, you know, religion. I think we had religion together. Oh, we religion. had anthropology together. Um, I'm sure we had philosophy. A I think there was a philosophy class, maybe. So philosophy, I famously only class I've ever dropped in all my entire years of schooling. I think I went to one week and said, no, not for me. I only did um, one. I had to do one. I only did one <laughs> class. But um, I, I was joking that I was like, yes. Yeah, so we know each other from. Um, from basically the most successful, right? Anybody who majored in those is, you know, ex you know, obviously extremely successful. But I kid because um, it's where I sort of got a uh, a feel or a um, a little bit of a maybe a sign from the universe that this is a direction that I want to move in. I didn't listen for a pretty long time. Um, but what I am is uh, I am a yoga teacher. That's the easiest thing to to kind of call me. Um, although I 
I, I did hear my husband in therapy just a moment ago telling his therapist that, quote, my wife has like 10 jobs. Um, and I, I won't dispute him <laughs> on that. But um, in this space, I, I am a yoga teacher. Um, but I bring a lot of different modalities into sort of the classical um, Hatha style yoga. So Hatha style, right, is more of the movement based um, yoga that we're very used to here in the West. Um, but if you are my student, you're always going to hear me kind of peppering in a little bit more of the philosophy um, because I'm especially um, fascinated or kind of drawn to this idea that um, we we're here on earth to enjoy the time that we're here, but we are meant to learn something. Right. And so, yeah, I'm going to bring it right there immediately. Um, but, <laughs> and so I, yeah. I really want to work with people so that they, they can start to think about or work with, right. These ideas around um, when something bad happens to us, right. And something, um, hurts us when we go through some kind of tragedy or trauma it's not about pretending it didn't happen it's not about getting over it and frankly it's not even always about um like not acknowledging it right we can we can absolutely do that and and we should um but also sort of working with this idea that we can also keep it where it happened right and I'm fascinated with this concept of death and how we can have multiple deaths within. Ah. <laughs> I thought it was me, to be honest. No, it's my sister. <laughs> She's telling me to stop talking about death. I'm like, <laughs> um, but you know, that we can have these multiple deaths throughout our lives and that death is really something that instead of shying away from it, instead of putting it in a box in another room, um, you know, quite physically, you know, in the ground, right? It's something that we should, um, step into and kind of explore what are these many deaths that we can, um, you know, live through. And, um, you know, that's, that's, I don't, I don't spend every, you know, so, so Sunday is like my big teaching day. I don't spend every Sunday sort of talking about death with my students. But one of the things, you know, that I do work with kind of one-on-one -on -one with people is um, that kind of little bit of interest, that introspective work of uh, essentially uh, finding that fearfulness, right? We don't want to, yeah. we don't want to die. We don't, we, we've sort of been taught our whole lives that this is a fearful thing. We don't want to talk about it, but it's so necessary to sort of say goodbye um, and, you know, close a, you want to think of it as a chapter or an event um, and then start really the process of right. learning who you are now. Okay, I have so many questions for you. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so I feel like, a, like culturally, and I do this myself, right? We've been taught to carry our survivor yes. stuff with us, right? So I even had a therapy session where my therapist was politely saying to me, maybe we could reframe you as not a survivor anymore. And I burst into tears and said, but who am I if I'm not right. a survivor, right? And so... We're taught to like drag this baggage with us. And, and I find it interesting for me personally, mm -hmm. I, I um, melded in my head the idea of being intimate, not like sexually mm -hmm. intimate, but like emotionally intimate yeah. with somebody with, with um, vomiting all my traumas out, mm. right? And so that does, apparently that doesn't, some people have told me I don't need to do that, right? So can you talk a little bit about like get like it, like is it okay like you know can we have permission from you tonight to leave the things <laughs> in the past and what does that look like and also can you talk about the physical part of that because I know we the body keeps the score right oh, so yeah. how do we how do you do that with your clients on like working out that trauma and leaving it at that chapter in the book so one of the things um so let me let me think where I want to start um, so one thing is, you know, again, as somebody who is deeply connected to, to the past in terms of, I, I am a historian, right. And, and I, and I'm an archivist now and I cherish the past in the sense that it's important to know where we came from. It's important for evidentiary value. It's important for informational value, but when it comes to trauma, to pain, I think sometimes what we do is we stay. Right. And instead of being able to step out, analyze 
ask questions, see what patterns are getting repeated, right? When we, 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 we live it, right? And so you also mentioned this idea, right, of like the physicality of it. I think when we stay in it so much, we have that physicality. I actually, by the way, I mean, yes, being intimate, right? Having a good girlfriend, having a, you know, a parent who's extremely close, um, a, a new partner, right? A romantic mm -hmm. partner. Um, there is sometimes this idea of like, I don't want to say everything. I don't want to say everything. If I say everything, if I start to talk, it's all going to come out. And then this person is going to run screaming from the room. Right. Right. And I think that it's, that is, that is one of the tests, right? So one of the things that we work with so much um, in, in my practice in particular is the chakra system and the chakra rate, right, of course, that is the most uh, important for the, for this particular discussion is the throat. Right. Yeah. And we physically feel that close up when we start to talk. Right. Mm -hmm. when, so when you say this word vomiting, right, yep. we feel that constriction. We might feel hot. We might feel sweaty. We might feel like we, we can't actually get the words out. And so what I think is really important is initially having those safe spaces, be it a therapist, be it a be it, be it an intimate, right? Who right, has, like a healer, right? Like somebody, right? Somebody who has given you permission. I think that's very key. Uh, a dear friend mm -hmm. of mine um, and I often talk about this idea of asking permission before you 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 talk, um, mm -hmm. in the sense that you know I'm when I need to talk about something, I will text this person and I will say I am struggling and I would like to talk are you mentally and emotionally available for me to do that? Because I think what maybe sometimes does happen is we are so, again, put in this limited space. And when we go to open up and we talk, no one, you know, we feel like we can't do this in everyday life. So then it just comes out in this stream, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're familiar with the word vomitorium, right? So it's like we've condensed <laughs> all the, all of our emotions through this very narrow channel. And then there's somebody who's calm and listening to us and it just explodes, right? right. And so what we can tend to do then is, um, frankly, we, we, maybe we freak people out a little bit. Right. But also what we're doing is in the empathy exchange, we are taking and taking and taking and we're not giving a ton back. And what we want to make sure is that that sort of that energy, right, that we're putting out into the universe, yeah. we're also willing, right, to give as well as we're taking. Um, so I don't so, know if I've answered your question so much yeah, as I've you, created new. No, I new love ones. that. There's so <laughs> many. No, I was going to say it's a lot to. So I would also add that you can pay people to help you with that, right? So like- Absolutely, you yeah. must. Right, they're like, the best. I, I mean, like Meg O'Neill, who I work with, she literally, she was my healer for a long time and still mm -hmm. work with her. And she said to me, hand me your trauma, literally give it to me. And I was like, I'm happy to pay you to take my trauma, right? So I can then deal with the other crap that's going on in my head. So I'm a big fan of paying people to listen to A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I don't think you can get into this space. Um, you know, I have a, 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 a so, someone that I have paid to take my trauma on, um, you know, who we've had these conversations before where we've talked about the wellness space. We've talked about the healing space and how, you know, there is so much that you need to practice yourself. There's so much shadow work. There's so much sort of exploring and probing these depths that one must do before they can say, yes, Olivia, give me all the trauma, right? And so like, in your case, your Meg is like, yeah, give it to me. I have practiced right. to take this in. Right. And, you know, and I have practiced, you know, I'm I mean, we myself. have like, even mm -hmm. on this live, I can see like Jen Shakespeare is another one. Like, you know, she's a trauma coach, right? So mm -hmm. she has extensive background in taking people's trauma, you know, so but I, I agree with you. I think it's, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you too, when we have that built up inside of us yeah. and we go if I just happen to call you and I said Ali blah, blah 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 and I'm releasing all this stuff to you and maybe you're not ready to take it at that mm -hmm. moment what does that do to the energy of what you're releasing to the world and like I feel like that's maybe going to be a negative in process does that make sense yeah like you, like you the person who's who's doing it um yeah. What it is is not negative so much as it is a net neutral. That's my that right, and that in mm -hmm. the sense that okay. you're neither 
giving nor receiving, right? Oh. And then at a certain point, you start to tip the scales, right? Depending on maybe how long or how little you pause to take a breath, right? Where you start, where you start to tip maybe into the ne negative in the sense that you're now withdrawing from a bank account that's no longer, you know, right. having funds. And um, it's just hanging in the air. It's like... Right. <laughs> Yeah, right. oh, your lovely husband. Joined. I know my husband. Joined. Uh -oh, we bet we <laughs> have to stop talking about him. Um, so okay, so let's. So we actually had quite a bit of people really wanted to hear from you about how do you leave the the oh. past in the past. You know, like mm -hmm. how, what's the the practice? Let's you know take, um, you know, I a divorce as an example, right? So yeah. like you know, moving on from that. Um, there's so much to it, right? But how do you? integrate and leave that? I mean, I know that's a huge question for you, but mm -hmm. what, what would be some tips you could just give people to start thinking about? Yeah. I mean, one thing that I think is an excellent practice for anybody that doesn't do it is, all right, let me take a step back. We talk a lot about this idea. You hear it all the time. People talk about, let's be present. Let's be mindful about what we're doing. But what is it actually, mean? what is the actual practice of being present and of being mindful? One of them is to actually feel, right? So there's a lot of times, right, where um, I'm sure everybody has had somebody say this before, where, you know, when you're starting to feel panic, right, when you're starting to feel mm -hmm. like you're losing grip, right, of what's going on, there's this practice, right, where you can start to name the things in the room, right, that you're in. You can start to talk about their, um, you know, just making these observations. What is it right. made of? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? Right. That is the most basic way of to explain this in the sense that let's be in the present moment. So when we talk about leaving the past in the past or, um, you know, moving on or, you know, again, like you know, d killing the old self and, and all these ideas like, right. well, it's silly. The human brain does not let you forget. You are always going to have these moments where you're walking along, you're in the car and you hear something Triggers. and it immediately brings you back. Right. Yep. These are right in the truest sense. This is a trigger. Yep. But what we but what we can start to do is that we can make these conscious choices that when we start spiraling, right, when we start asking the, the what ifs and why did this happen and what did I do, that's when we need to pause and we need to put into practice what am I sitting on? What am I wearing? Do I like the way that it feels? Do, am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Do I need to have a drink? Do I need to call a friend? Do I, you know, yeah. to do these things that again, bring us back into the present moment. And again, it can be as simple as like, I really need to go to the store and to then start listing out the things I need to purchase from the store, right? Because those things are going to bring you out of the spiral, a memory, a trigger sense warning, those things are always going to happen, right? But it's the, when we were talking earlier, right? About the physical trauma that you can yeah. feel. Yeah. Staying there, that's when you're going to feel the throat closed. That's when you're going to feel the stomach ache. That's when you're going to feel your sternum like somebody's punched you, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. what you can do, breathe, make those lists. Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, one thing that I really like to do is to lay down and clear my mind. <laughs> Very easily said, but it's essentially saying like, don't, don't necessarily think about uh, taking the dog out, right? It's more about, I need to lay here and I need to feel exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. And then once I get up, I'm, I am doing something yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. I do that too. I also dance, right? Dancing, I, like movement. Oh, ecstatic right. dance, which is what you do, right? <laughs> do. Ecstatic yeah. dance is so how good. would you know that, Ali? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just, yeah. yeah, how would I know that? I'm just an Instagram <laughs> creep. But that is, especially yeah. for women, especially for women, I would say women in, our, in Western society, everything is confined. Our clothing is confining. We used to have friggin' whalebone keeping us from like having any shape other than a perfect hourglass, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I talk, actually... Side note, <laughs> when, I, when I teach, right, a massive part of the asana or, you know, the, the, the movement-based part of yoga is breath, right? Yeah. Breathing in, breathing out. When I look out in the old days in a room full of people, I, you can physically see in the faces of women 
the strain to keep from filling their diaphragm up completely because it might look like they have a belly. Yep. Right. And it's wild because you need to breathe. I was just, right? I was just <laughs> talking about this. With, I'm working with Gina, who's another mm-hmm. one of our experts. She's my, where I'm doing body, she's my body coach. Yeah. And part of the fitness that we're doing is breathing because I mm-hmm. tend to not, I don't breathe sometimes. Mm-hmm. And she was doing that. She made me lie on the floor and watch my stomach go up and down. And I yes. will tell you, I've been having trouble sleeping. And when I wake up in the middle of the night, I will focus on the umbrella breathing. Yep. There, and it really does help. Like, cause, and she was like, yeah, cause you're actually getting oxygen to your brain. Like, you know, let's revisit that, that thing I was just talking about, about being present. Oxygenating yourself is going to make you feel extremely uh, present. We don't realize how much we re- restrain our breath. Um, but I was bringing this up for a reason. I was talking about breath. There was, oh, it's that again. Yeah. So because we're so restricted, yeah. dance is fantastic. And if you can sing along with it, right? So not only are you getting sort of the full body shake out of that, that yeah. negative energy, but you're also unblocking, right? This throat by singing. I love that. So are we allowed to really let go of our past? And like, do we have, does our brain, can we get permission? Like, <laughs> from the universe to do that. And like, you know, and how can we then move forward and say goodbye to a piece of ourselves from, Mm -hmm. you know, I think for like, for me personally, um, I've done a lot of reparenting work and therapy, not as much reparenting, but more like remarriaging myself, I Mm -hmm. guess. And so, um, you know, going back to the girl, the woman that I was three, four years ago and saying, you know, hey, it's gonna be okay, whatever. It's very hard to do that. Right. It's to be it's nice inc- to yourself, to go back and yeah. see that person again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's incredibly, incredibly hard. I think it's that to me was more scary going through that movie in my mind than anything else and letting her go. Right. And saying like, you're okay now. You can not be so triggered by everything. Right. So how do you um, help people do that say goodbye to parts of themselves in the past? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's really important to, you know, I think it, one, you know, I think we use language, right, because we're trying to explain something. But one of the things is, like, we are going to be in a constant cycle of apologizing to ourselves, being negative to ourselves, mm-hmm. apologizing to ourselves, asking permission, taking too much, right? We're constantly going to be in this cycle. So I think one thing that we should do is remember that we're always going to be doing something that is going to need a little bit of extra work, right? A perf- a perfect being, right, who never needs to come back and learn another lesson is exceptional, right? A bodhisattva. They never need to come back and experience the pain of of this world, right? Right. And that's not going to be us. So I think one of the things, um, you know, that we should also remember is let's let's talk to to baby, you know, Olivia, right? Let's talk to Olivia from from four or five years ago. And she's kind of like a ghost story in the sense that Mm -hmm. you're scared of her a little bit and Mm. you're worried for her but Mm. you also have but you also remember you've learned things from her the live that it lives today could not live without that live does it suck that she had to go through all of that absolutely but one of the things right to keep in mind is we learn from our past if you truly shut the door and said goodbye I'm never, I'm never acknowledging you again. You, you run the risk then of repeating. And that's, this right. is not to say to live in a state of paranoia where you, where every, you know, romantic relationship you get into in the future or any other intimate right. relationship you get into in the future is going to hurt you, but you're older and you're wiser and the body keeps the score, not only in negative ways, but in positive ways as well. When something doesn't feel right, you're right. going to listen to that gut and you're yep. not going to close it off and restrict it. So we right. can, we can let go of the past as much as it means we need to be in the present more, but we still need to say, mm, this feels very familiar and I didn't know what to do at the time, but now I now, do. Right. Right. I'm a big believer. There's no mistakes in life, right? We, there's lessons. We just learn. I, I teach that to my kids, right? You didn't screw anything up. You learn from this. Now you'll know not to shut the, your door that and with your hand in it, you know, like little <laughs> things like that, right? Mm-hmm. But like, but I, I agree with that too. And 
I, I found my intuition has gotten so much stronger through my healing and through letting a lot of that go. Um, and I would, you know, it does feel like it's a completely different person. Like you said, like a ghost story. Like it doesn't, the things that I went through then, I cannot believe that that was the same human that is sitting here now. Mm -hmm. So um, just to like wrap things up and I would yep. obviously you can always come back on to talk about this because I think people would love to hear more. <laughs> but um, uh, how can people access you? Like if they're interested in learning more about this or working with you one-on-one -on -one, or how do you work with people? Yeah, absolutely. The easiest way to get in contact with me is um, my Instagram. I am um, uh, located in Jersey City, but I am a virtual person, right? Um, mm -hmm. You can book one on one classes with me, you can come to um, my group classes. I will also tease, um, I'm working on um, a couple of things this year, which I hope will be turned into more like workshop type things. Um, I'm working with a couple of like-minded um, yoga teachers as well that we're hopefully, hopefully going to grow this into um, a little bit more of like, a, um, I don't know, maybe like some more group-based things. So, um, but the number one thing I would say is to follow my Instagram. Um, I'm trying to get better about posting there. Um, I've got my little community in Jersey City, but I, um, I really want to, to reach more people. So you can reach out to me there. Um, and I am always down to chat. So if you're local, I'll meet up with a cup of coffee. If you're not, we can hop on Zoom. I love that. And I love, and you, know, you mentioned it, but you have a background in history. And oh, yes. Let's talk for a second about that, because I think that you do bring so much. You're not just a yoga expert teacher. You bring a lot more into this. Can you just, I want people to understand when you sure. say that you're like oh, a yeah. historian, like you are truly a historian. Yeah. So um, I'm, I am a historian. Um, you could say I'm a historian twice over because I have a BA and an MA. Um, and uh, my focus really was in uh, European medieval history. Specifically, I dealt with death. So my, my master's thesis was all about how people honored the dead. Um, and so I draw a lot from ritual, from um, how different religions, different societies, uh, mm -hmm. both European as well as indigenous societies um, have dealt with death. Um, both sort of in the physical sense as well as the metaphorical sense. Um, that's where a lot of my academic study um, has been in. Um, I took a brief sojourn into advertising technology, um, and then I went <laughs> back into academia, and I'm a librarian. So now I get to help people with all of their <laughs> interesting um, avenues of study. Um, but yeah, so I would say the, my focal points a lot uh, at times are religion, philosophy, um, with uh, sort of an emphasis on how we commemorate, how we celebrate, uh, and how we kind of interact with each other. So I'm fascinated by people and, and all facets of our lives. Yeah, and I love that. And so when you work, when clients work with you, you're bringing in so much more than just yoga, the yoga oh, yes. philosophy. And I think like, so if you're somebody out there that really is looking to you know, have the movement, have the philosophy and bring in the history and all of that, like definitely get in touch with Allie. She has been a wonderful friend to me for many, many, almost how many years? It's scary. But um, yeah, we don't need to say. <laughs> a lot of time. But you know, but but also during the last couple of years, you know, just um, she has helped me clear a lot of energy out of my own house. And so she, you know, I think that because you have such a unique perspective you, and such a uh, reverence for history and for death, um, I just, I would love to have you back on. I mean, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. So hey, maybe we'll I'm happy to do it. <laughs> have to set something up. Thank you so much. Please go follow Allie. We're, we're going to um, turn this into a YouTube video and Ooh. a blog post. So this will Fantastic. be forever living on the internet, but Absolutely, you must come back so we can talk more about this. Thank you so much, Allie. Thank you, Liv. Thanks for sharing your space and thanks everybody for joining. Thank Take you, care. everybody.